Our lives really closely parallel what the past keepers have experienced. I think paramount to that is be able to help people that are in distress. And a lot of people wonder if we get bored, what we do out here. And I think it's just a good, clean lifestyle. It keeps us busy. It's like working on a farm. And we're always, always either helping people out, giving people tours, sharing the rich maritime heritage of the lighthouse and of the area, and just trying to maintain things. All of the past keepers had all the same challenges of maintaining the boats, all the different electrical systems, mechanical systems, the boat ramps, all of this just requires constant attention. And it's a, it's a rather unique lifestyle, one that we're very, very fortunate to be able to be part of and to get to meet so many nice people. Careful. This is where the masons have opened up the walls. We had problems with cracking on the outside. We thought what was happening was that the wind was taking the whole gallery and getting it to twist, which was causing the cracking. But what we found out is there was moisture getting in between the walls, and that's why they're taking the coating off the outside and are going to completely repoint and reseal everything. But it's kind of neat to open it up, and I don't think anyone's looked in these for a long, long time. Just be very careful coming up the stairway here. Watch your head, this stuff's really unforgiving. The buoy tender boat used to come in and anchor off, off here, and they would bring a thousand foot hose ashore, and they would fill the fuel oil tank, and there was a furnace in the basement, and they'd pump the oil down into the basement, and that's how they would keep the house. The lighthouse is solarized. In, 19, in 2008, um, they put in the solar panels. Basically, the waterways were the highways. It was, you know, there were schooners and barks and everything. That would, that's how all the goods were brought up and down the shore. It's pretty, pretty interesting actually to read the shipwreck log. You can really get a get a feel for that because in the shipwreck reports, you'll see the stuff they were carrying with lumber and coal and molasses and you know, they were the commodities of, of the time. There have been 60 shipwrecks on Goat Island. You would have thought that, you know, it would have been some pretty wild weather, but in reading through the logs, it really wasn't. They were, a lot of them were very calm days. They would have reported that they could have seen the lighthouse for, you know, several hours before striking the the rock, so it gives a real good perspective as to how poor the steerage was on the boats, how influenced they were by the tides. Right now we have um, some, quite a bit of masonry work going on. Mortar joints and bricks, they're gonna clean them all out and repoint everything. And they've been working on the foundation here doing the same thing. And it's kind of the final phases of, of getting everything put back together. The walkway was initially constructed in 1859, and we know of it having been washed out one time prior to that. Uh, so to 1978, there, was, uh, there were some records in the U.S. Lighthouse Service archives that showed that it had been damaged once before. And the blizzard of 78, I think, is pretty much known as, as the 100-year storm that we've had. It, it, was, it was huge. And Marty Kane was the, the keeper out here at the time. And what he's told me is that the water came up underneath the deck there there's a set of old concrete steps, and he said that the water came up to the top step. It was a huge surge. It, it came, uh, you know, came over. So I think it reached a point height-wise where it was pushing on the walkway itself. Um, I think the water just came up to a point, and then the force of the water pushed it. And from what I understand, it washed right across the the island and right down to the end of the harbor. So what we've tried to do, we've tried to engineer the 
the walkway in such a way, although it, it looks uh, traditional, it looks authentic, uh, we've tried to use some modern materials and techniques, and we've made it so also so that if you know the next time there is an event that that's that's that severe, um, the center of the walkway has been built with kind of a weak link in it, so that that would break away and not take the whole thing out. The Kenny Bunkford Conservation Trust is really a it's a very special organization. It's been around for about 35 years as a grassroots organization. Things that we've taken for granted for years, all these beautiful spots that we get to visit, all these different things that we get to do are all possible by the trust. And what we've been able to do is preserve some a lot of land. We've got over 1,900 acres of land now, everything from from wildlife preserves to hiking trails and biking trails. Um, we've got places to camp. And these are all things that I think past generations have taken for granted. But as things change and become more congested, uh, these, these things start going away. And uh, the Kenny Bunkport Conservation Trust has, has been able to preserve these things and well into the future what you are looking around at all these islands that you see around goat island here they're all preserved there won't be marinas there won't be condominiums you come back in 200 years you'll see what you see today and i think that's a very special thing